precise documentation of athletic perfectionism driven to either complete domination or utter destruction. McEnroe's game here is dissected in a way that McEnroe himself could never hope to achieve. We don't see him as a speck on a court from a distance, but as a ruthless and punishing competitor. A composite of flesh and bone, blood and vein, anger and fury, grace and delicacy. An Olympian touched only by the sun and the clay and pummeled violently, silently, and courageously through the divine and hellish gauntlet of manic human expectation. Tennis can exist for him and no one else. Singularly, isolated, floating high above the earth, within the realm of perfection. If so much as a single muscle fiber, a fragment of thought, or a mere second lose their charge and drift away from him for even a moment, the whole thing collapses in on itself. No mistakes whatsoever. Second stop, please. Answer my question! The question, jerk! A writhing fit of internal implosion. McEnroe doesn't let go because he can't let go, and instead turns his storm of inner fury into an outward display of rare theater. If a call slips past him, he argues. If ambiguity arises, he addresses it. He reacts swiftly, completely, and fiercely. In the end, he might forfeit a point, he might throw a game, but in doing so, he deliberately acquires the undivided attention of every last human being in the stadium. He reasserts the ultra-control that, unable to shake, he must harness somehow, whether he's winning or not. At times brooding, childish, spasmodic, hilarious, he bears himself undeniably naked on court before the sea of faces and the army of cameras, and yet, he remains totally alone, playing point after point against an echo of himself a shadow mimicking his every movement and always gaining the upper hand. If he can't seize a point, he can't grasp the nature of his opponent. And since his opponent is himself, he turns toward a maddening, inward outburst of inexplicable emotion. You cannot be serious! Yet through his outburst, he reaches towards his audience. He lets them in. And in that moment of potential understanding, of potential mutual understanding, he thrives. The chance of a stadium grasping for even a moment his pain, his drive, his world. It's enough to push him further, perhaps further than any person has ever gone before. For he is alone and painfully so. It's the only way he knows, the only way he was ever taught, and the only path he's got forward. He is alone and is thus the first, last, and only to tread his own footsteps. In this is a lesson of humanity. We've only ourselves, but is that ever really enough? The mighty will fall, and in their fall is total, complete obliteration. And in obliteration is freedom. Chance. If McEnroe can't seize the game, he'll seize his audience. And if he can't seize the audience, he's left only with himself. And when he can no longer manage himself, his drive, his constant propulsion forward, he'll change his mind about a great many things. And in the end, if he's truly the athlete he's become, the legend he's spun, he'll adapt. He'll play the game just like he always has, until it's all over. And thus, he will never, ever lose.